Sometimes, you just want to play a game to relax. I know, many games allow you to do so, but I mean a real relaxing game, with no bullets flying your way, explosions hampering your view, or kids hurling jokes about how you need to touch grass. So that's where Lonely Mountain Downhill comes in. Sure, it's a strange title, but it's accurate. You're a sole rider, you're riding downhill on off-road tracks that are spread out on four different mountain peaks, so yeah. Lonely Mountain, Downhill. If you've played any of the Trials games, you'll get the basic gist on how this game works. You get to ride a mountain bike around trees, rocks, water, and other obstacles to get to the camp at the bottom. That's it. That is all you gotta do. In order to do this, you have to know how to control your bike, which is simple enough as well. You can choose one of two different control schemes, one of which allows you to just move the left stick in the direction you want to go. The other, which is what I preferred, are the old school tank controls. No matter which one of the two you use, R2 always pedals, L2 applies the brakes, and X gives you a quick sprint. It won't take long to get the hang of it, I promise. What will take you a bit is how to figure out how to clear each track in the most efficient way possible. Why is that? Because although the game can be considered a relaxing experience, just like the Trials games, you'll crash. A lot. And this will be a point of frustration, but that's also why the game is so fun. So here's how the game works. On every new trail, your first task will be to do a ride with no pressure. As in, it doesn't matter what your completion time is or how many times you crash. Once you get the feeling of the track, you are given what are called beginner's objectives. These are normally separated into a time goal and a crash goal. Complete the race by completing these, and you'll earn things like bike parts and new trails. You'll also earn more challenging expert goals, along with a final task of completing the race in one go without falling over. Anyway, let's talk about the races themselves. You get to select one of four peaks, and although at first you only have one trail to start with, by completing challenges, you will unlock the remaining ones. Simple. Once you select the trail, you start at the top, and just head downwards. Checkpoints will allow you to start further down the track if you crash. Even if you are attempting some of the challenges, if you go past the time limit or crash one too many times, you are never given a game over. You can just keep practicing the course. Another interesting thing with the time is that crashing doesn't penalize you. Instead, time is only saved once you cross a checkpoint. If you feel like you've had a bad run in a segment, simply restart the checkpoint and the time reverts backwards. It is unusual, sure, but it always feels fair. And that's good because you'll want to try different ways of traversing the dirt paths. There are plenty of side areas. Maybe you'll want to duck behind a tree. Maybe you'll opt to attempt to drop off of a cliff and ride the rocks to the lower level. There are plenty of options, and although not all of them work out, most of them do pay off in the end. In addition to actually using these side paths to get some better times, there is one sort of collectible that you can hunt for. Rest spots. Each mountain has about a half dozen areas where you can stop your ride, pause for a bit, and just take in the sights. None of them are required on your rides to progress, so you can feel free to look for these on your own time, or not at all. The only other collectible are the bike parts. By completing specific objectives, you'll earn them. Although they are called bike parts, it's more like the currency of the game. You'll spend these parts on the menu to unlock one of the other five bikes. Each bike has varied stats, like higher speed, acceleration, traction, or even suspension to allow for steeper drops. For example, your starting grasshopper can't fall more than a few feet, but later bikes can make adrenaline-fueled, heart-pumping falls a breeze. It's up to your playstyle whether you prefer wind blowing through your hair as you hit high RPMs, or the feeling of weightlessness as gravity takes hold. If you are really interested in it, there are leaderboards. Not my cup of tea, but they are available if you want to test your skill against the world. One odd thing I've noticed is that the game pauses for a few seconds once you reach the finish line. I assume it's because the game is loading your time to the leaderboard instead of waiting until it shows your results. It's a bit odd, but it does exist. Again, personally, I couldn't care less about leaderboards. I never did, probably never will. If you are looking for something different to test yourself on, there are also daily rides. These are done on the existing tracks, but are altered in ways that make them much more difficult to complete, 
such as putting a hefty amount of debris in your way to force you to use the less traveled, more hazardous paths. The more of these you complete, and the better the time, you'll unlock different cosmetic gear for your rider. Now, there are two minor things I do need to mention about the game that keep it from being perfect. One, there is no reverse. There were a few times where I reached an area and didn't crash, but couldn't get around it either. Eventually I'd just flop over, but being able to back up, even slowly, would have been nice. Sure, there's not really a reverse on real bikes, but you can at least pick up your bike and move backwards, right? Secondly, there's absolutely no camera control. This doesn't exactly cause a lot of issues, but again, there were a few situations where I saw a side path, and I was curious to know if it was worth exploring before I put my tires on it. Eh, I suppose it does help blend to some of the challenge and even mystery of the paths, especially when you're heading into the camera and you're not exactly sure where you're going or what you might be running into. There's really only one last thing to mention, the graphics. Sure, they are simplistic, but they are charming in the way only this style can be. It makes riding in the various environments an enjoyable experience, even if you are trying to avoid objects. And what is surprising is that there's blood when you fall. Yeah, it's just red squares, but I was actually still surprised to see it. And that's Lonely Mountain Downhill. It really is a beautiful game in which you are simply traversing outdoor areas, listening to the ambient noises, since not to mention there's no music in the game, and determine whether or not you want to go for a top time. It's a solidly playing game, and one I find myself coming back to, even if it is only for a few minutes at a time. Check this one out if you're into games that don't require a lot of brain power. Final score, 6 out of 7. This is Reaper. Happy fragging.